Hi guys, it is Friday afternoon, the weekend is finally here, and of course that means plenty of good old DIY fun aboard Athena. Over the next couple of days I hope to drop the rudder and possibly to apply a bit of paint on the inside of the engine compartment. Last weekend I got started sanding the engine compartment and getting it ready for paint. I didn't quite finish sanding, but since then I have finished and all that's basically left to do now is to wipe everything down and start applying primer. I doubt that would make for a very fun video on its own, so in an attempt to keep things interesting I've decided to try and drop the rudder this weekend. As you can see there is a bit of rust oozing out of the rudder. While that's certainly not a good sign, in my humble opinion it's not a death sentence either. But considering the fact that I've got the boat firmly planted on terra firma, I think it makes a lot of sense to drop the rudder, split it open, dig out the foam and inspect the innards. Dropping the rudder is going to be another first for me. I've never tried doing that before but I've got a pretty good idea of what I'm in for. I've prepared a little drawing. This is a somewhat slobby cross section of the rudder area. The rudder here about Athena is skeg hung. So here we've got the skeg, that's this pointy bit here extending down from the hull. To that is secured the rudder. And then inside of the rudder is the rudder stock. That's the red line you see here. That is then in turn connected to the steering pedestal. I suspect the rust we saw here and here on the outside of the rudder comes from the wells that secures these fingers to the rudder stock. Now whether it is actually fingers or if it's a bigger solid plate that remains to be seen. But there is going to be something that's somehow secured to the rudder stock inside of the rudder that helps the rudder turn. The reason I'm so gung-ho to open up the rudder and inspect this area is because if these wells fail, well then there's nothing to translate the force from the rudder stock into the rudder itself. Meaning you could be turning the wheel from now until judgment day and nothing would happen because the rudder stock would just be turning freely inside the rudder. As far as removing the rudder, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, I might just have jinxed myself pretty hard there, but it should just be a matter of removing this arm that's attached to the rudder, undoing the attachment down here, and the rudder should drop down. Of course, I will have to dig a hole in the ground out here so that the top of the rudder stuck here can clear the rudder bearing. Let's go ahead and snuggle up inside the belly of the beast and take a closer look. I would like to commend the engineers at Volvo for coming up with a pretty comfortable engine bed. I've spent a number of hours on top of this thing now and it's actually pretty comfortable. And just in case you're wondering, that's what it looks like when you forget to remove your iPhone from your pants and it slips out the hole for the sail drive. Satan or Hilvedeus. Welcome to the cave. This is the bottom of the steering pedestal. That's an old auto helm. That's a rudder sensor. And this is that arm that's connected to the rudder stock. And this is what I need to remove. As I hope you can see, that thing is a tiny bit rusty. Yep, 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 yep. Pretty dang rusty. The connection to the rudder position sensor should just unsnap, but... Ah, oh, oh, yeah. I've got a feeling everything else is going to put up a little bit more of a fight. It's a couple of hours later and I've basically been stuck since I removed the connection to the steering pedestal. The rest is just going to require a little bit more effort, aka violence. I think I've basically tried every single trick in the book. I've tried banging on it. I've tried banging on it with a bigger hammer. I've tried some automatic transmissioning fluid and some acetone. I've tried applying heat. I'm basically out of ideas. I mean, there is always Mr. Angle Grinder, but I think I'm just going to sleep on it and see if something else springs to mind. So I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday morning, and it is a glorious Saturday morning at that. I've been at it a couple of hours, tidying up aboard the boat, and just every once in a while ducking down here, applying a little bit more heat and a few jabs with the Persuader. 
Through constructive dialogue, me and this stubborn arm here have reached an agreement that it will vacate the premises. Now we're just trying to hash out the fine print to see when that might happen. That was pretty freaking awesome. I think this thing would have been a little bit easier to remove if I could have applied more heat. But all I had was a 2000 watt electric heat doodad. So yeah, but it's loose now. Now there's just a small matter of that arm for the auto helm. I really hope I can get this to let go. If I can't, I can always remove the entire auto helm unit, bring everything outside where I've got more room to swing the hammer. Ha! Huh. Over the last couple of weeks I've seen tiny trace amounts of water in the engine compartment and it was driving me nuts because I can't paint in there while there's water there. And I was looking for leaks in the cockpit or in the tent covering the cockpit. Turns out it was just this little reservoir for the water heater. Well, now that's one less problem to worry about. It looks like this thing doesn't want to come off, but I've loosened this nut so I can simply just unscrew everything. Only I can't really for this do that, which is there to keep the rudder from moving too far out of position. So if I just remove that, I can then spin this thing and I should be able to pull this out of here. I don't know why, but removing old rusty doodads is very satisfying. So this thing is secured down here with two bolts and up top with three bolts. Mmm, that is certainly nice and crusty, but uh, let's just go ahead and get this thing out of here. Wow, look at this thing in glorious daylight. That is pretty crusty. I'm glad I got it out of there in one piece though, because at least in my mind, now it's gonna be easier to drop this off at somewhere that manufactures stuff in stainless steel and just have them build me a new one. Because I should replace this with a nice shiny stainless steel one, right? I mean, I could certainly try and clean this thing up. That would be a more affordable option. But the thing is, these bolts here, they're welded to this thing and they aren't really long enough. The nuts were only on there on the other side of this with just a few threads, which is mind boggling. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think, but I'm very much leaning towards having a new one built and that should probably be in stainless steel. But if you've got an opinion, go ahead and leave it as a comment down below and uh, we'll see what happens in a couple of weeks. Now there's just a small matter of this key in here that will have to come out before the rudder will drop. So let's see how easy this is gonna be. Ah, this thing is being a tiny bit of a pain. Huh, that is, uh, that key is being a right pain in the behind. I think I'll just check to see what the hive mind thinks might work on this. How the heck do you get a key out that is rusted in place? Now let's see what you guys have come up with. Keep soaking it, yes, that's, uh, get a Dremel, try to cut it down the middle, both lengthwise and across. That's certainly an option. That's something I could do as a last resort. Someone suggesting to tap it and pull it out. I don't really have anything to tab it with. Um, freezing it will shrink it. Yes, that's true. Um, electronics freeze spray. Drilling it and tapping it. PP blaster or gunk penetrating oil. I've seen lots of people mentioning this PB blaster stuff. I, I've never seen that before. Heating it with a propane torch. It's kind of the it's kind of cramped down there. I, I'm afraid I'm gonna set fire to the boat. PB blaster. Soaking it with penetrating oil like PB blaster. PB blaster. Jesus, that stuff must be good. There were a lot of good suggestions on that post. Thank you so much, guys. 
I am a little bit limited in what I've got here aboard the boat. I don't have a propane torch. I don't have anything for uh, tapping with, whatever that doohickey is called. I do have a pair of vice grips. The local hardware store had some kind of penetrating kind of oil. Caramba? I don't know. Maybe it'll work. But that's about what I've got to work with. I also have my Dremel. I've got a hammer, some screwdrivers. And that's it. I've got a pair of vice grips on there. I've got some penetrating oil on there. I've cut a little slit down here so that I could put a crowbar in underneath there and then push up on the crowbar while jigging the vice grips. So far, no joy. Given the limited amount of tools I've got here aboard the boat, I think I've tried everything I can think of, even after reading all of your awesome suggestions. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do this the painstakingly slow way, and that's just to very carefully cut out the key. Let's see how this goes. This is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna make it a little bit comfortable for myself down there with like a little camping blanket thingy, some hearing protection, some eye protection, some extra light, and a podcast on my iPhone. So yeah, let's get started. Well, it looks like I've got just enough of these uh, cutting discs to make it through that key, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed. I think I just saw the key move a tiny bit. I think this might be it. Let's go ahead and give it a few taps. Ta-da! I did accidentally touch with the Dremel in here ever so lightly. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but that's the only mark I made. So yeah, not too shabby. It's taken almost all day, but at least I'm making progress. There's nothing here that should keep the rudder from sliding down. Let's just go ahead and take a quick look underneath here. That's the top of the rudder stock. That's where I'd connect the emergency tiller in case I should ever need it. This is what fits into the top of this. And uh, this was secured to the inside of the cockpit locker. That's certainly a good idea. To me, it doesn't look like there is anything down there retaining the top of the rudder stock. Before we can move ahead to the next step, I'm just gonna have to rush out and buy something I thought I would never have to buy again after I became a liverboard. So excuse me for just a few minutes. Ta-da! A digging implement for removing dirt. Not really something a liverboard needs. You would think that given the fact that there's usually a lot of water around here, add to that the fact that it's been below freezing for weeks now, I would have realized that the ground would be frozen solid, but nope, didn't even cross my mind. <sighs> I've been at it for 20 minutes and that is the grand sum total of all my efforts. For the top of the rudder stock to clear the bottom of the hull, I need a hole that's roughly half a meter deep. And that's just not gonna happen today. Looking at the weather forecast for next week, it looks like we'll have temperatures above freezing with lots of rain. For once, I'm actually excited about the fact that the forecast promises lots of rain. I think that rain will help the ground thaw quicker and Maybe then next weekend, digging that hole won't be like trying to tunnel my way out of prison with a frickin' spoon. That, of course, leaves me with the question, what the heck do I do with my day tomorrow? And how do I turn this into a video that's actually worth watching? Well, I'll figure that out tonight. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna go ahead and tidy up here off camera, but I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. It is a cold and windy morning here in Denmark. On the way here, I swung by my storage unit and got up my silicon heating mat and a sheet of styrofoam. I posted a photo on Facebook yesterday to let you guys know the frustration I was having with the frozen ground underneath the rudder. And a lot of you suggested I try using my silicon heating mat to thaw the ground. I'm not sure it'll work. I mean, this thing will go up to 100 degrees Celsius, but yeah, well, we'll see. Okay, I think I'm all set up. Got the heating mat, temperature controller, all I need to do now is to plug it in. 
If it's more than just the very top layer of dirt that's frozen, I doubt this will work. But like I said, there is no harm in trying. It looks like we're almost up to temperature. Let's head up inside the boat and get out of the wind. Ooh. Okay, I think I'll give it an hour to thaw the ground down there. And if that doesn't work, well, then I'll just have to wait until next weekend. And during that hour, I guess I could always just tidy up a bit out in the forward cabin. Welcome to the horrible mess that is the forward cabin. Yeah. I'm not gonna bore you guys with me tidying up this stuff on camera, but while I'm in here, I figured I could answer a question I've seen pop up in the comments here on YouTube and also a couple of patrons have asked me. And that has to do with the orientation of these two smaller hatches, the one that's here and the one that's in the forward head. As you might be able to see, these are oriented so that the hinges are here, meaning out towards the side of the hull. This is how all the Warrior 38s and 40s I've seen have their hatches oriented. So I think this is the stock option from the yard. I did consider changing it, but I actually decided on keeping them like this because, well, for one, it's a lot easier to get to the handles here to open and close the port light. Up on deck, there's more room to get around the port lights. If the port light was oriented in a more traditional fashion, meaning like this, there would be less room to get past it out here towards the hull and less in here towards the mast. And last but not least, if I'm in a marina and it's warm and I want to get a bit of air circulation through the boat, because these two hatches, this one and the one in the forward head, both open towards the center of the boat, I can open one depending on which side the wind is coming from. So if the wind is coming from over here, I can open this port light and have it function as a tiny little wind scoop. And if the wind is coming from the other direction, I can open this one in the forward head and have that function as a tiny little wind scoop. I think that's pretty neat. While we are on the hot button topic of hatch orientation, let's just take a quick peek at the forward hatch. As you can see on this hatch, the hinges are here on the forward edge, meaning the hatch opens up like this. Now that is pure and simple just convenience because it's a lot easier for me to get at these handles here when they're towards the aft of the boat. I know there are a lot of opinions when it comes to hatch orientation. I think there are mainly two sides. There's the side that claims that the hatch should be facing like this one because of safety, meaning some people think it, the hatch will get ripped off the boat if it's facing the other way around when a wave comes crashing over the bow. Then on the other hand, there are the people that says when it's oriented like this, you're not going to get airflow through the boat. I mean, I guess both are kind of valid points. I, I don't think a hatch like this is going to get ripped off the boat when it's closed, even if it's facing another direction. And I certainly don't ever want to have this open while sailing because no matter the orientation of this, if a wave comes crashing, you're going to get a ton of water in here and it's going to ruin your day. The hatch I've got aboard Obelix is facing so that it opens forward. And that's been really nice for air circulation. But here in Denmark, we do have a ton of rain during the summer, a lot of showers. So for me, I think it's just more convenient to be able to easily open and close this hatch. Now, if by the time we make it to the tropics, it turns out we need more air circulation in here, it's easy just to flip the hatch. Very few things here aboard Athena are set in stone. It's a few hours later, I've tidied up a tiny bit. So uh, let's head down and see how that silicon mat is doing. Well, there is not much of a visible difference here on the ground. Oh, I think maybe the last time I was proud of having dug a hole, I must have been like five years old. Well, five-year-old mass, eat your heart out. This hole is freaking gorgeous. See, it's so awesome down there, even the water wants to join in. Yeah, that should be plenty deep. I really don't want the rudder to drop down, but not clear the bottom of the hull. That would be really annoying. Now, let's see how this goes. The rudder is attached to the skeg with six bolts alternating directions so that the nut is facing this way on three of them and the other way on the other three. To be honest, I have absolutely no idea what will happen once I remove that last bolt. I've put some junk underneath the rudder just to support it, to keep it from just sliding out when I'm not expecting it. But uh, let's see what happens. Okay, everyone, engage safety squints. 
So far, so good. Oh, look at this. There's already a tiny crack here. So this is already starting to separate away from the skeg. I think that is a good sign. Okay. The rudder is now firmly resting on that pile of junk down there. This might not look heavy, but I, I can't lift that out of there. I mean, I was expecting this thing to be heavy, but not this heavy. I, I'm half expecting this to be just solid stainless steel inside. I, I'm kidding, of course, but surprisingly heavy. I'm sure you guys are curious to get a look at the skeg, and I'm no expert, but to me, this feels pretty solid. Maybe for once, there's something I don't need to rebuild. That would be a nice change of pace. As far as the rudder itself, it looks like someone bumped into something down here. Other than that, I guess we'll have to wait until I get it opened up. I was planning on chucking this thing in the back of my car and hauling it up to my parents' place because they've got a heated workshop. But considering how heavy it is, I just, I don't know if that is even an option, but uh, I'll figure that out. This is what the engine compartment looks like without any of that unnecessary clutter in there. I think I've made some decent progress over these last couple of weeks and soon I can start rebuilding, which is the fun part. This coming week, I'll see if I can find a good place for a stainless steel work that can simply just make me a copy of these doodads here. But uh, to be honest, I don't really know where to go, but I am sure I will figure something out. Now, it is getting pretty late in the day, so I think I'm just gonna end this video here. Next weekend, I'm either gonna be splitting open the rudder and digging up the foam, or possibly painting inside the engine compartment. So yeah, I think I might pop out one of those uh, Vodi card thingies. That way you guys can let me know what you'd rather see. And that is gonna be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.